Hey everybody, welcome back. Hope everybody is doing okay and uh, staying safe. So today, uh, this video is going to be devoted to installing the front sheet metal of the 69 Camaro Z28. So I'm starting off by showing you the the new hardware uh, that I that I bought from Heartbeat City, and this is all assembly line correct. Uh, brand new hardware for all the fenders and fender wells and core support and <clears throat> I got the master uh, fastener kit that includes every one of the nuts and bolts for for the entire uh, body of the car from bumper to bumper so uh, it's pretty nice stuff so I'm starting off here showing uh, me installing the uh, inner fender wells to the fenders and as some of you may know when you build these cars you have to have the the inner fender well in before you install the fender otherwise you're you're asking for a lot of grief and you know scratches on your newly painted inner fenders like in my case so I've gone ahead and installed uh, both inner fender wells and both these fender wells are the original fender wells to the car so this this left or the right side here has some corrosion under where the battery was but that all cleaned up nicely as you uh, saw in a previous video and it's all going to be covered up anyway so you can't really see it but they turned out very nice and uh, um, I'm installing all of the brand new hardware here and the, it's really nice having the brand new bolts and and hardware because all the threads are nice and clean and not tight or anything like that so in this scene here i'm opening up a box from heartbeat city which has really some great reproduction stuff and i always get the assembly line uh correct Parts you pay a little bit more, but but the parts are are just head and shoulders above the quality. So I'm kind of rushing through unboxing here, and then I'll slow it down as I undo each one of the parts. So when you install the the right side fender, you have to install the the heater box and blower motor first, and in this case here, in this scene here, I've I'm showing you the brand new blower motor that I bought and you know in my opinion I don't compromise on a car that's 50 years old when you take all of this old stuff apart it's just got so much crud and dirt and dust from 50 years of of just dirt and grime and you know people didn't take care of these cars and and it's just really nice having the new stuff and and uh that that piece there was the uh uh, heater box uh, cover which bolts to the firewall and again you have to install all that before you put the fender on here is the uh, the new um, uh, flaps the 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 rubber flaps that go in front of the suspension and I got the uh, under the hood master kit with all of the attachments screws nuts bolts washers everything and again, all that stuff is really nice when you're working with new stuff. And here I'm, unwra I'm, I'm unwrapping the new uh, heater core. And the, the heater core is very important also because, again, you have to remove all of that uh, heater box under the dash to get to it. And it's just better to do it now when you have everything apart. And in this box, I've got a brand new really nice reproduction of the heater box that goes under the dash and there again this is where all the flaps are that you open and close to give fresh air and so on and uh, the old one that I took out was all dented and rusty and crusty and and I mean had 50 year old dirt and grime and dust and everything and sure it could be all cleaned up and everything but there are certain parts of it that you just can't get to and in my opinion the car is going to smell like brand new when it's done and I don't want all that 
old dirt and dust to be blowing around in the car. So I just don't compromise and I put a new air box in there and I'm just really happy I I stepped up to the plate and paid the extra money for it because this piece is really, really nice. And the only thing is I have to change the uh, plastic air duct on it, which I'll show uh, upcoming here. The other thing is that my kick plates, which typically on most of these cars before they're restored, have cutouts in them where people added aftermarket speakers and everything else. So I bought a, a, a new pair of kick panels, which are really, really nice. And there again, you've got, you've got air vents in them with flaps and so on. They get all rusty and tight and, and you know, they don't function well. And, and the, these, these are really nice. They come with the new uh, cables and the new uh, knobs to open and close the vents. And you can see there that it's got a really nice brand new vent on it. And, it, and again, the old one that I took out was all rusty and, and you know, so anyway, here's the old uh, under the dash air box. And you can see the difference here between the new one and the one that I took out of the car. And there again, yeah, if your budget doesn't allow for the $250 that the new one costs, then, you know, I'm sure the old one could be cleaned up. In this scene here, I'm, I'm cleaning up the, uh, the original uh, air duct that attaches to the air box, which for some reason the reproduction one is not correct. It's small and the, the original one is much larger and uh, I've just, you can see the original part number right there. And I just wanted to keep the original one because uh, it's got a lot more uh, exit vents on it, which you can see here. It's, uh, I'll point them out here. And it goes right onto the new air box like that. And it fits perfectly. All the holes are lined up. But on the original, or on the reproduction one, they just put a small little section there and I don't understand why they didn't make it the same because it's got uh, four vents in it. One there, there, and here at the end, and then one down at the bottom also. And it just, I think, distributes the air a lot better. So here I'm taking off the, the one that came on it, which again is very small and only in one vent. And then the old one just bolts right back on. You just use the same screws and uh, just screws right back onto the original spots. So they even have the, uh, the added hole there for the longer vent, I guess, in case you wanted to replace it. So you can see there, it looks very nice. Now I'm adding the, uh, the resistor. Um, I just took the old one, cleaned it up. It's got the original part number on it, and I'm just bolting it right on. And these normally don't wear out. So in here, I'm uh, installing the new heater core, which is kind of difficult to do, really. Those brackets are kind of difficult. But anyway, I had forgotten to turn the camera on when we installed the driver's side fender here. But uh, here we're installing the fenders. And... Again, you definitely need help installing the fenders. You can't do it by yourself. So uh, I grabbed one of the guys there at the body shop and, and he's helping me. So, so to put, in order to put the uh, passenger side or the right side fender on, you have to put the firewall pad in. And again, I bought this. Uh, this is the molded firewall pad that comes with the jute on the back. And the uh, it's got a little aluminum foil in between the rubber and the jute. And it's, uh, it's molded to the firewall. And again, this piece costs a little bit more than the, than the cheap ones do. But it fits so much better. So, and even, even this one is really a pain in the butt to put in. So um, luckily I have brand new uh, little rubber um, grommets that, that hold it in place. And uh, again, this, this is uh, edited because it took me probably a good half hour to, to get that in. So once that's in, then you have to install the under the dash heater box and the, uh, the 
air box cover on the firewall and the blower motor. You have to do that before you put the fender on, otherwise you can't do it. That, that blower motor, you cannot install it with the fender on there. So, and here we're placing the right side fender in. And again, this is not for the faint at heart, boy. I, you know, especially after the car has been painted. Uh, I mean, I actually wanted to paint the jams and then paint the fenders and everything after they were installed, but um, I lost that argument. So anyway, I'm just kind of working myself into the engine compartment. It is a lot easier without the engine in the car to install these fenders. So. But they went on with not a whole lot of effort, so it's you really do need the help, though. So then uh, we got both fenders on and the header panel, as you can see there. And now I'm putting in the lower valance. And you have to put all this stuff in snug, but but with the with the. Uh, idea that you have you're going to have to go around and loosen everything and get everything lined up once everything is installed loosely and that's what i'm doing here i'm just kind of putting in the bolts hand tight so that they can be loosened and readjusted when we get to that point And I've installed the brand new hood hinges on the fenders, which you can see there, and they're all ready to go to put the hood on. And once I get this lower balance in, then, uh, then we'll be installing the hood. And then at that point is when you have to go and adjust all the gaps and so on. So here we're, we're preparing to install the hood. And the first thing you want to do is put all the tape on all the edges. So you don't scratch the new paint. And it's pretty obvious you need help to do this. So to get one bolt started on one side and then then the other side and again you just want to kind of hand tighten everything at first so then at that point we just kind of line it up uh, preliminary lining up everything and then at this point, we have to go around and readjust all the gaps and so on, which is going to be a tedious process. And uh, I'll show that in the next video. But um, anyway, that's going to that's going to do it for this particular video. I just wanted to show us installing the front uh, sheet metal. And uh, as you can see there, the whole car, all the sheet metal is installed now. And again, we have to go back and adjust all the gaps. So, uh, and in the next video, I'll be uh, installing the uh, steering column, which I have completely restored. And it's got the new steering wheel on it and everything. So I'll show that here in a minute. But uh, again, as usual, thank you so much for watching. And please uh, like, subscribe, and share. It really helps the, support the channel so that I can continue making these videos. And uh, as I mentioned before, I'm trying to get the car to the point where we paint the stripes on it and, uh, and then we have to clear coat back over the hood and, and where the stripes are. And if you notice on the header panel, it was uh, sanded dull and that's what we have to do to the trunk lid and the hood and so on wherever the stripes are going to be painted on. So uh, that's what we'll be doing next. But uh, as I mentioned, the next video, I'm going to show the uh, uh, rebuilding the steering column, restoring it and installing the new steering wheel. And, uh, and then by then we'll have all these gaps adjusted with the latches and everything. And then we'll start putting the stripes on. So 
again, I'm repeating myself, but thank you so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.